Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 are some of the most memorable games from the PS2 era for me, with Battlefront 2 in particular being the first multiplayer shooter I ever played, and is easily one of my most played games growing up. It also helped that I was a much bigger fan of Star Wars as a kid than I am now. Having watched all the movies and played a ton of other Star Wars games in the past, like Lego Star Wars on DS, the Lego Star Wars trilogy on Wii, and whatever the hell this monstrosity was, but there was something about Star Wars Wars Battlefront 2 that kept me coming back. So when the game studio Aspire announced that they would be bringing back Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 as a collection on PC and consoles, with bonus maps and characters, and even up to 64 player online support too, I was immediately on board. I added the game on my Steam wishlist after seeing the trailer during a Nintendo Direct of all things, and when it later released the following month, I couldn't have been more disappointed. Now I want to start this off by talking about the first issue I had with this collection, before even playing it yet, and that was the insane install size. Because why in the ever living fuck is this game over 60 gigabytes on Steam? Like, I'm not a game developer or anything, but when it gets to a point where a PC port of two games that released in the early 2000s and took up not even 15 gigs at the time combined takes up more space than Elden Ring? Like what the fuck are we doing right now? What could they have possibly added to make that extra 50 gigs? Because it's definitely not just some improved textures and bonus content. So yeah, the game is pretty bloated, but that isn't the biggest deal ever as long as it works as intended right? Well, the main selling point of this, I'd imagine for most people, is the online multiplayer, which was practically unplayable at launch, as apparently the game had a total of 364 player servers when it went live. You know how fucking stupid that is? Imagine announcing a collection of two cherished games from the early 2000s, advertising it everywhere and as expected successfully convincing a lot of people to buy it, not like you'd need a lot of convincing since there's clearly plenty plenty of diehard fans out there who'd be interested in it regardless, then deciding to only launch with free servers for the entire game. But that's not the only issue this game was facing, because players were also experiencing high ping, crashes, and major bugs like available servers not appearing in the browser. So even if you could get into online matches, chances are you either wouldn't be in them for very long, or your ping would be so high you'd wish you weren't. In response to all the backlash, Aspire would would promptly make a statement saying, We'd like to thank the Battlefront community for their overwhelming support and feedback for the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection release. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a more positive way of looking at it. Since launch, we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability, and we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilised to prevent further outages. And that's all they've said. Probably the most bare bones statement they could have possibly made. They might as well have just said, yeah, we've seen all the issues, guys, and they will be fixed. Like, Okay, any time frame on that? Strategies? Like, anything else would be handy to know. So after the widespread hate this game has received at launch, and the mass server issues players have reported since, I decided to give the game a try myself, to see if it's really as bad as everyone says it is. So I downloaded the over 60 gigabytes needed for two games that originally released on the PS2, keep in mind, and gave it a fair shot. Yeah, I got fucked. What now, huh? Why is it- why is he getting health back? What the fuck? What are we supposed to do then? Alright, take this, you fuck. Oh, I'm literally doing no damage. Oh, what the fuck? What? This guy's a bad man! What is- what the fuck is going on over here? Also, this does not sound healthy. Alright, let's try and get onto their ship. Oh my- okay, maybe not. Uh, that was the shittest bro. Let me steal one of their ships. I- oh my god. Jesus, this thing is running on fumes, <laughs> holy fuck. Alright, they'll never see it coming. Look at this, man, the fuck it- what the fuck? Yo, what? <laughs> Excuse me, what? Alright, I'm actually gonna land on their ship this time. There are so many enemies. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we got this. Um, right. That was great. That was a great attempt. We got it there. Fucking hell, this thing's slow. Jesus. I'm gonna have to circle back around. That's gonna take forever. Oh 
Oh my god. Like, look at this. Holy shit. Where am I even? I'm not, you know what? I'm just gonna kill myself. This shit is so fucking annoying. I'm getting in. No. Wait, did I just chuck him out? <laughs> I cannot fucking hit them. Okay, bait them, bait them. Oh no! <laughs> okay, let's leave. Okay, now I'm gonna circle back around. They're never gonna see it coming. Oh, I'm such low health. Holy shit, my health is so low. <laughs> let's just grab another ship and go. And then we're going for the other bait. So then we're circling back around. See, this guy has the same... Oh, okay, can I get in this? Oh, I can. I can get in with him. Okay, man, you know what to do. Oh, this is cool. Okay, go in, man. Go in. Go for it. Oh, I hit him there. Alright, here we fucking go. Oh, no. I, I... What is going on? Can I not shoot this while it's not in there? That's fucking stupid. What's the point? Oh, my God. There's so many of them. Yeah, that was kind of fucked. <laughs> What is going on on my screen? Oh, Woody! You can't let Woody get in! Uh oh, why am I missing every shot? Oh my god, the rubber banding is crazy. Grenades! Oh, big grenade! Big grenade! There's still not really any lobbies to join. Let's try the first game. Man, even this fucking title screen brings back so many memories. Holy shit. Oh my fucking god. What is going on? There are so many bots. Oh my god. Yeah, I forgot that there's no sprinting in this. So that's kind of fucked. Oh, don't. Don't. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, they've gotten to here. What a grenade throw. I think I've just killed my team. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's going on? I couldn't move. Oh no. Jesus. Why do I have so many grenades? So after playing for a couple hours, I will say the gameplay itself is fine. It feels the same as it did back when I used to play the original, which I guess is its entire goal, but I did encounter some issues here and there. The most glaring issue I discovered immediately was the incredibly low number of people playing online. And I'm sure that's all down to the horrible launch the game had, because the game did originally have over 10,000 players playing the game at launch. Now, I was playing on PC, so maybe the player count on consoles are much better, but the fact that there's no crossplay for PC players is really disappointing. So although there's more than three servers now, thank god, there's now not enough people to fill them. At least not on PC. Holy shit. Look how dead this is. There's no one on, man. It's all PC dedicated. Because there's no crossplay, which is fucking stupid. Why is there no crossplay on this game? Alright, please be some lobbies. There are fucking hell. There's like eight people playing the game right now. And look at the ping as well. Oh, fuck's sake. One good thing about this collection though was the fact that it included all the DLC for both games. So you got all the DLC characters and maps, which is pretty cool as I never experienced them in the original. With Jabba's Palace being a clear highlight for me. So this is the... I think one of the only bonus maps in this game. But it seems really cool. Can you just shoot Jabba? He has a wee trap door here that leads you into this bit against this big fucker. Alright, let's just go down. Let's go down and see what, what's going on here. Look at this. Oh, look at that guy's getting fucking devoured. Oh, yeah. That guy got grabbed. Oh, nah, this is sick. Wait, why are all the... I think the bots are running into this thing. And they can't get around it. But that's the thing with this collection. The only positives I can muster up for it are bare minimum inclusions. While the negatives for the game just keep stacking up. I guess it's good that they increased the FPS to 60 instead of the original's 30. But even that wasn't implemented properly at launch. As most players were finding themselves locked at 30 anyway. Giving people even more reason to give up on it or refuse to buy it in the first place. The last thing I want to touch on here is the price of this collection. Because Personally, I think charging £30 for what's basically a bare-bones port of two games
games that released over two decades ago is reaching a bit. Now don't get me wrong, if the game had improved visuals, new content other than old DLC and maybe even just some extra settings options and quality of life improvements, I would understand the price point here. But for a product as lazy and as flawed as this being that much is just insane to me. Especially for PC as you can still buy the original games for a fraction of the price. Yes you won't have online but the state this game's online is in already, I don't think that really matters. Star Wars Battlefront the Collection should have been the easiest success ever. But like I mentioned in my last video, it's common nowadays for a game studio to be lazy when the IP of the game is big enough for the guaranteed sales are looking for. And that's exactly what this is. It's a lazy port of a cherished game franchise that clearly wasn't handled by anyone that cared for it. Even without the atrocious launch and server issues, this game just feels like a life cash grab. From the crazy file size, the bugs and glitches, and just the lack of improvements in general, both from a graphical and gameplay perspective, they didn't even bother adding inverted flight controls. Okay, let me try find one of these. Why is it in first person? Don't do that to me. Ah! I forgot, I forgot. So flight controls are always inverted. You can't change it in the settings, which is fucking stupid. Why is that a thing? How have we gone to a point of such laziness in game creation that a port of two games made in 2004 and 5 are arguably worse than the original. Like, how is that even a conversation we are having right now? But anyway, I better wrap this video up before I go into another rant. To sum it up, do yourself a favor and do not buy this shite. For the same amount of money, you could probably buy the original games on a pre-owned PS2, and you'd be much better off. Like this video for more stuff like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.